We're going to be talking about the capture capability from within the CATIA environment. So you want to document your imagery, you want to send something to somebody very briefly or very quickly to show the, the graphical part of the design that you're working on, whatever the case may be. So there's many reasons for this documentation for uh, assembly purposes, maybe documentation for uh, user manuals, etc. So Normally, people will do this with a something like Snagit, an external product, but you have the ability to do this from within the, the CATIA environment and create an album of your imagery. But first, let me tell you why you may not need to do this. And this is something that few people seem to realize. If I go to view and drop down on the dialogue to the bottom to full screen, I can get rid of all of the CATIA things on the screen. In other words, the, the, the windows, dialogues, et cetera, the workbenches, toolbars, et cetera. Hit the F3 key, the specification tree is gone. And just about every, to my knowledge, just about every uh, Windows machine has the ability to do what is referred to as print screen. PRTSCR is going to show up on one of your keys. If it is a different color from the, the most of the other keys, that means you have a function key that you use to capture the image. So I'm just going to use that right now to capture that image. I'm going to flip over to my word pad and do a paste and there's the image. So that's one way to do it. Now, if you're going to print it, you're going to be spending a lot, are you going to be uh, uh, expending a lot of print for the blue background, et cetera. So you could go into CATIA and modify that and make it a white background. Uh, you could get rid of the compass up there, et cetera. But there's a little bit easier way to do that with the tool that's inherent in the product. If I right click on the screen, I can get out of full screen mode simply by selecting full screen again to turn it off. If I go to tools, image, I have capture, album, and video. So you can actually capture a video from within the CATIA session also. So let's look at the capture function itself. This is the still imagery function. I get a dialog box that, or I get a, a short uh, uh, set of icons that show me the tools that I have available. First tool is actually do the capture. Second tool is a select mode tool. If you select that, you can click and hold and drag across an area of the screen. So you're only capturing a subset of the screen. I'm gonna hop over this one for options right now. You can do this in full screen mode. You're gonna capture the screen. You can do it in pixel mode, the most common mode. Pixel mode means that you are capturing everything with the minor exception of any shadows that you may have created in the CATIA environment. And there is also a last mode here called vector mode, which only captures wireframe elements. So if I select vector mode right now, select the capture tool, the imagery that I have here in the dialogue in the lower right shows that I am only capturing all of the wireframe elements and I'm not capturing the, uh, the surface elements in between. Therefore, that's generally a not very frequently used option within the capture. Now, having said that, if you're working on finite element modeling, meshes, et cetera, it would be a great tool for that. So you're not capturing things that you don't need to capture. Okay, so the first thing you really wanna do is go to settings and determine what you want to have available when you do this image capture. On the general section, first you have show banner. Show banner allows you to add text information on the image that was captured to document something about when and how and who, et cetera, the capture was done. So if I select show banner, 
I now have a screen here that, or a, 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 an input field here that shows some dollar sign information. Those are variables that can be used to capture. The documentation has more than that, but generally people just wanna know who captured it, the name, the user ID, the date that it was captured and the time it was captured. So that is generally sufficient. Under color mode, I have the ability to do grayscale or monochrome or color. For this purpose, I'm just gonna leave it at color. I have capture only geometry. So instead of capturing the entire screen image, I can turn on only capture geometry and it's not gonna capture all of the tools, et cetera. Analogous to me having previously a moment ago gone into full screen mode and get rid of the toolbars, et cetera, get rid of the stuff that's CATIA specific. So that's the general section. And then the bottom one there is, hmm, I wonder why they say capture white in black. If I go to the pixel mode, the most common mode, right here, I can turn on, make it a white background. So if you're gonna print what you're going to capture, for example, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be expending a lot of cyan color to get, to get that blue background. Uh, and you really don't want to do that anyway. So I'm gonna select white background. And now, and I don't know why they put this on two different screens, capture white on black means that this color right here is going to be captured as black. So if it's white and I have a white background, I stand the chance of not capturing some of the geometry, some of the imagery, and therefore capture white in, in black means I'm going to change the white color, which would wash out in the background color to black so it's visible. Coming back to, to pixel mode, anti-aliasing just means it's going to smooth out some of the lines. Constant size capture means that depending on the resolution of the, the monitor that you're capturing from, if you have a super high resolution and don't have a constant screen size capture turned on, it will not uh, uh, make sure that the image is the same size each time you do a capture. So number one, turn on anti-aliasing to smooth out edges that might be a little bit jagged looking. Constant size capture means it'll fill in pixels for the higher resolution so that the image, the actual physical image that's being captured is the same. And then if I go to rendering quality, low screen and medium and highest and customized. Everybody puts it on low screen, uh, which means that it's going to capture at the resolution of the screen. Now you can play around with the medium highest and customized to get a little bit different variation of that, but most people leave that on low screen because that's gonna be the capture of what you're actually seeing on the screen. And then if you are in monochrome, there's a dither function that will give a better gray scale, uh, uh, et cetera. If I drop down on this drop down list, there's nothing there. So in monochrome only, uh, the only selection is dither. Under preferences, let's ignore album for the moment. I'll get back to that in a moment. Under vector mode, Semantic level discretized means that if I'm drawing a line and there doesn't seem to be enough pixels to not make it look kind of fading in and out or jagged or whatever, I'm going to add points to that line. In addition to that, I can select what format I'm going to use. These are the five formats that are available for the vector mode. Remembering that vector mode is only capturing wireframe elements. It's not capturing shading or anything else, okay? Uh, or lighting, et cetera. And then you can do CGM, these five selections. If you get down and dirty with some of the standards for these different formats, you can actually go to properties here and turn on some of the standards and et cetera for that to get a particular type of that particular format for the, uh, for the capture. Capture size, model, uh, model size, or I can do display size. And then 3D accuracy and hidden line rem removal. 
just gives you a better image if you have hidden line removal turned on, which you often will. Now I'm going to go and do things in pixel mode, the most commonly used mode. When I say OK to this, nothing will happen by virtue of the fact that I have set the settings now. If I come back to this setting tool on the capture uh, toolbar, I have the settings and these settings will be persistent across multiple sessions. So it will remember those settings from now on. So if you need to change something, you need to come back to that and say, all right, I need to change this setting in order to have a different variation on the capture. Screen mode, I'm gonna just capture the whole screen. Pixel mode is the one that is most commonly used. Remember that I have this selection tool that allows me to drag across an area with a, tr with a triangle or a rectangle, I mean. And uh, I'm not gonna select that right now because the only way to get rid of it after you've done that, if you wanna change to another mode is to end the capture tool and bring the dialog back up again. So let's just let that go. Now I'm going to do a capture the leftmost tool on this toolbar, select that. And down in the lower right, I see what I'm going to capture and what the end result is going to be. Now we'll see this a little bit better here in a moment when I, when I uh, take it over to WordPad. But the tools at the top are, nah, I don't really want this one, just, just cancel this. File it to a place of my choosing, print it, Okay, and if I do print, it's going to give me a standard print um, capture, a, a standard print options screen that you're familiar with from other uses. I can put it on the clipboard so I can do a copy operation. Let me do that. Let me hop over to my WordPad, do a control V to put it on there. And now what I've got is the image and the banner information that documents who created the image, the date and time the image was created. And as I said in the documentation, there are other dollar sign variables that are available. I'm just gonna do an undo here so I can reuse that screen. Now you wanna save this so that you can come back to it later. The two tools on the right hand side, remember we ignored the album tool under the preference on the main dialog on the uh, uh, on the options dialog. So I have album and I have open album. This should say put it into the album. If I select this, if there is a default album that can be changed in tools options. I open the album and there are two JPEG images that have been captured. You can go to the capture, do what I call the all powerful contextual menu by right clicking right on the item, uh, actually highlight it first, I think is required in this particular dialog box, but right click on it and here are all the things that you can do. One of the obvious would be to rename it so it has some meaning when you look at the name of it in this listing. I can preview it, select that, and I just get a preview box with a fit all in, and I can print from here. The next option is to edit it, select that, and now I have a, a, an editor that allows me to do some basic editing of the image, all right? I can select colors that I'm going to use on it. I can save it and here are th two items that look familiar. I have settings for the editor and this is just nothing more than what kind of image quality I'm gonna capture, et cetera. I have the ability to clear it with this tool. I have the ability to flip it with this tool, flip it vertically. I also have a tool that allows me to adjust brightness, contrast and the gamma value for uh, for for shading, et cetera, uh, which you can play with to get a little bit better, higher quality image if you elect to do so. This is select the colors. I have a two color palette here that I can use and I can say, well, let me select red instead of the uh, instead of the darker color there. 
I have a brush that allows me to put things on the screen and I'm just going to do it in a silly fashion here so I can color, I can draw things on here. I'm drawing with a square uh, uh, size. The one thing that most tools like this do have that this does not have is th these are the only sizes that I can, actually these right here are the only sizes that I can select. So it's it, the, the sizing of what's going to go on there. The other thing that is uh, obviously missing is the ability to put text on here. There is no text creation tool. If you have those needs, you should be probably using a image capture uh, tool. We use Snagit at I Get It that uh, will give you a, a much better ability to put uh, highlighting and text information, et cetera, on there. And then I have the ability here with two tools to do, if I park on these, draw with an airbrush or I can do a fill area. So if I've got an area that's bounded by a wireframe, I can fill it. Fit all in, just gets the image on there. The next one over is real view and that will show the image or a piece of the image in the actual sizing. And then I can move around on the screen or I can zoom in or out to find my imagery. But this, if I stay at one to one, it's actually showing the physical sizing and you can see where anti-alias and we come in here, et cetera. I can move the image to the right or left to up or down, and then I can do a navigate that's going to allow me to grab particular areas of it to just show that particular area. So that's the editing tool. Uh, very basic. I can draw line, multi-line, meaning that I can click, click, click and have multiple segments of lines. I can do a rectangle or an ellipse. I can use an airbrush effect. I can use a fill that, that I can fill in areas with a particular color. So it's not a sophisticated editor by any, by any means. And if you need more than that, you would not be using uh, this tool from within the product anyway. So I'm gonna cancel out of there. Come back to right click again. I can print it from here. I can save it. I can copy it. I can look at the properties of it to see what the resolution is, et cetera. Uh, and how much memory it needs in order to, to, to use that particular image, uh, something that might be of interest to your IT department. And then I can do an erase, which means get rid of, get rid of this guy. I don't want him anymore. Um, so the rename is probably something that you absolutely should do immediately after the capture. So the naming of it has some meaning to what is actually in the image. Now up top here, I have the location of the album. So I've created one album. I can, if I so elect, browse and create an, a, an album in another location. So if I go to this part of the dialog, I can select a different directory, et cetera, a different name for the album, et cetera. And then in the lower left, I have a preview of what is in that particular item that I've selected. And here's another one that I just captured the screen image itself. So I can select that one also and use that for the, put that into the editor, uh, whatever the case may be. So let me zap these out of here. So what we're doing is we're capturing documentation in a way that allows us to do some of the things that we would have to do manually otherwise. I've taken the specification tree away. I have a the ability to do a white background. And if I, or I'm sorry, yeah, a white background. And if I have white elements, it's gonna show up as black elements so you can actually see them. So if it's critical that you actually have the, uh, the X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X planes visible, for example, then they, they will show in black if you make the background white. So that if you move the geometry off of that center of the screen, you're going to see the actual X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X planes, et cetera. So just an option there. And then remember vector mode, uh, if you're dealing with finite element meshing and all that kind of thing, uh, it's a little bit better tool to use for that. But for general use, the pixel mode or the screen mode that you can capture the whole screen is, is sufficient. 
Now, I'm going to look at one other, th actually two other things in this drop down for tools image. I have the ability to go directly into the album. Now, this is the default album. Remember that Katia remembers everything you did and, keys, and, and most things that you do will become persistent. So if you put your album in a different location, this, this function and the function within the standard tools will take you to the default album or the last album that was used. Now, one thing, if you want to show something to show the back and the front of it, et cetera, there is a video tool. Select the video tool and I get another dialog in the lower right that has its own set of settings. Okay, what kind of a uh, uh, format and, and codec are you gonna use? The name, here's the directory location which can be changed with this tool. Automatic file name or I can give it a file name of my choosing down on the capture area. And then I'm, uh, and then I can designate where things are coming from: a fixed area, full screen, you know, window as a designated area. And I can also do things to modify how it's being created, what kind of compression is being used, etc. So let's just go ahead and leave the defaults there. I'm going to start the capture. I have a pause button and I have a stop button. And this one over here says preview. So I'm going to select the tool. I'm now recording. I'm going to do a rotate. Just for example, you want to just send a quick video to somebody to show them the back versus the front of this part, whatever the case may be. And then I'm just going to do a fit all in, stop it, preview it. And it's going to look absolutely horrendous on the preview. Let me forewarn you. And that's the movie tab in the settings. Now, the preview is being set. I believe it is five frames per second. And that's why you see all this jerkiness. So let's just can this, get out of here. I'm going to go back to my options. I'm going to go to the movie tab. And I'm going to kick this little devil up here. So I have a higher number of frames per second. Let me just do 30, say okay. Let me bring him back to the standard loca starting location and turn the video camera on and again, do a rotate. So again, it might just be that you just wanna show him and maybe an assembly, you wanna show him how, how parts mesh, whatever the case may be. And this is just a very quick way to create a video of that. And now the preview is going to be a little bit better in its presentation. So just remember that you want to change, if you want to use this, you, go, you want to change frames per second in order to get a smoother type of video uh, element on that. And then you can actually save that video. It's actually been saved already. If I go here, I can see that it was saved as movie005.avi in this directory. This is the default, but I can also use this to go to another location to save it so that I can have easier access to it rather than down in the, uh, down in the, uh, the, temp, the temp directory in my, for my user ID. Just in case you don't know this, this is uh, c colon backslash users is all of the users allowed to log on to this machine. Here's the login ID. And then you have in each one of these users app data so that you can capture application data locally and you have right access to this automatically. And you can say, I wanna do the local and I wanna put it in the temp folder. But this, again, this can be changed by simply selecting this folder selection. So that's tools capture and tools video. And remember that you can also come back here and just go straight into the album from here. But the primary use is this tools capture function where you're just capturing a still image. You want to get it to somebody quickly. You put it into an album. You can pull it out of the album. You can save it locally, et cetera.
so you can send it off to somebody. And there are compression options that you can use if you if you so desire to, to, to reduce the amount of data that's being transferred on a slow link, et cetera. Okay, thank, thank you everybody for your attention. Um, we have, uh, uh, this, this will be put on the, our YouTube channel so you can view this at a later time or other people that might be interested in how to use this tool. In addition to that, bi-weekly we have webinars and uh, obviously, if you're here, you, you're on the mailing list for that, uh, so you can view the webinars that we use. It's just a very brief introduction to a, a, a very self-contained topic uh, that allows you to pick up on some of the subtleties that maybe you, did, you weren't aware of. Thank you very much, and everybody have a great day. And you can also send questions to us by using the email address I get it social at tatatechnologies.com. Thanks and have a great day.